Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's GSA Weekly SBA 7J training topic. I'm Alan Shives for BitSpeed, and we do this GSA series every Thursday at uh, noon central, and we try to just uh, create a, uh, an, air, uh, an opportunity for you to learn more about how the General Services Administration uh, works and how uh, as it relates to the, what they call their schedule or what is often referred to as a contract vehicle uh, for companies to utilize how the government uses it, how you can become a, a part of that schedule, um, how it differs from SAM.gov, um, all the ins and outs and do's and don'ts and uh, preparations uh, to uh, participate. And then for those of you that have the schedule, you know, how you can utilize uh, some of the systems that are out there uh, in the GSA to make life uh, easier and better for you. We have our uh, resident experts uh, there, or partnered experts, uh, and Josh Ladick, the president of GSA Focus, uh, that uh, GSA Focus and BitSpeed have team together for the better part of the last uh, eight or nine or eight, maybe going on nine years now. Uh, and GSA Focus has worked uh, exclusively with uh, BidSpeed on uh, as assisting our client base with uh, obtaining their GSA, obtaining and maintaining their GSA schedules uh, there to 100% satisfaction there. So, uh, which is, uh, achievable uh, there when you have the best of the best, and Josh is the best of the best. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Josh uh, here, and uh, Mr. Ladick, thank you very much uh, once again for your time today, and the floor is yours, sir. All right. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate it. Let's see. So bear with me for one minute while I uh, share my screen. All right, almost there. There we go. Everybody should be able to see now. Um, thanks so much for showing up today. Uh, we're going to be going over uh, researching your GSA competitors to crush the competition, uh, particularly within the realm of products. Now, last week, if you were on the webinar, we did the same exact thing, only we did it from the perspective of uh, service providers. Today, it is for product uh, sellers, you know. Um, so. Uh, all that to say, if you sell products, great. Um, this is for you. If you sell services, a lot of this is overlapping and you'll be able to, uh, you know, definitely get some good information from it. Um, but you may want to go to the uh, bid speed, uh, you know, Vimeo page there and, and watch the one from last week as well. Um, now, um, little housekeeping stuff, uh, ask questions. Uh, you know, I'm here to answer any questions you have, here to help. So, uh, in the GoToWebinar uh, panel, you can ask questions. Uh, I will get around to those. Um, the other thing is next week, we're going to be going over another GSA webinar, five things to learn before getting a GSA schedule. Let me go in and correct that. GSA schedule, perfect. So um, that's a good one to consider as well, signing on for. That'll be on the 27th at the same time of day. Um, so just to uh, go through what we are going to have on the agenda today. A little bit about me, you know, why can you trust a word that I'm saying, you know, who am I? Uh, then we're going to just kind of do a quick overview, uh, locate and research and improve. Those are kind of the, that's the process to, uh, you know, do the research, you locate, you research, and then you improve. So we'll go be going through that procedure right there. Uh, so jumping right in, a little bit about our company, uh, 15 years in business, I think we just crossed over into our 16th year, oh, not 65, let me make that change. So 65 years, 16 years in business rather. Uh, we're actually at, at about 520 customers now. So um, I'll make that change later on as well. Uh, as a, you know, as our, uh, you know, our company has a success rate, we get our, our clients into the GSA program at a 98 point something percent uh, rate. So uh, you know, we're very good at what we do. We, we get it there in the end. It's not always a uh, clear and easy path. Uh, GSA is a government agency and they are known to make things a little difficult, but uh, in the end, we persevere. Uh, ran the numbers not long ago and I found that among our customers, uh, they all have GSA contracts and 
they earn about 917,000 uh, through their contract every year on average. Um, obviously, average is is uh, something that means average. It doesn't mean they're all getting 917,000. Some are getting zero, some are getting millions. Um, but that is the average, right around 917. Uh, as a company, we focus on three things, really productivity, innovation, and character. Uh, I won't go too much into that, but uh, you know, it's very involved in our hiring process and uh, the people we bring on board have to meet these requirements. Uh, as, a, as a company, our purpose and mission are, are right here. Um, our mission is to get small businesses into the GSA schedule program. That's what we do. Uh, we focus on small business. About 99.5% of our clients are small businesses. Uh, overall, our purpose is just to help you as small businesses to compete and win federal contracts. That's what we want to see happen and getting you into the GSA program and being a really great solution for you is, is how we do that. Um, I myself am a fourth generation small business owner, so that's kind of where my heart is. That's why I really do like to work with small businesses. You can see uh, my, my stepdad there, security systems, my grandpa sold cars, antiques, all sorts of stuff. He was kind of a wheeler and dealer. And then my great grandparents had a, a bottling company out in uh, San Bernardino. So uh, small business owners are kind of in my blood. It's what I grew up around. Um, here is to date kind of just a really snapshot of an, kind of the org chart of, the, of our company. You can see we've got a pretty uh, beefed up operations. We also have a customer success team. Um, and then of course, business development. But uh, you know, something this year I'm focusing on is customer success and just offering our services in, in, in a great way. You know, fulfilling is always important. Communication and transparency is as well. So those are all just really important things to, to me and my company. Um, so hopefully there, you know, I have a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, uh, gained your trust a little bit. Uh, if you have any questions on me or the company, of course, ask. Um, I'll have my email up at the end. And, you know, not all questions are um, perfect for this setting. You know, sometimes they're a little bit more private. You don't want to ask them on, in a webinar. So feel free to reach out to me direct. Uh, my email will be up on there in a, in a little bit. Uh, but let's jump right in for what the reason you're here today. Um, we're gonna be going over how to research your competition and then how to take action on that research. So the problems really come down to a couple things. What are you, what's your pricing? What are your products? You know, what are you offering? And are the terms and conditions uh, you know, unfavorable? You know, did maybe, maybe the configuration on your contract originally, uh, maybe it was good at the time, but maybe it needs to be reconsidered right now. Um, on the pricing side, one problem is maybe your prices are too low. Um, it sounds, Sounds, you know, like that's a, you know, something the GSA and the buyers would love, but actually, you know, uh, if you're competitive, but you're not optimizing your profit, that could be a problem. Um, another thing is that I've, I've heard buyers actually say, you know, if, if, if they see a price that's too low or even at um, just the lowest level, they just kind of assume that it's a lesser solution. Um, so that's not always the case. Industry by industry, things are, uh, you know, kind of viewed differently, um, but it's something to consider. Um, on the flip side, are your prices too high? So uh, price is the number one variable in award decisions. Uh, the, the government doesn't want to misuse taxpayer dollars. Sometimes it's because they are, you know, really honest people who care about their job. Other times their motivation is just that they don't want to end up in front of a, a panel uh, having to explain themselves for a certain purchase. Um, whatever their motivation is, pricing is very important. Uh, your solution might be the best, but agency buyers do have a budget to work with. That's their biggest concern. And they also have to rationalize each purchase. They have to kind of pretend that uh, they will have to explain themselves in, the, in their purchasing decisions in front of a panel someday. And, uh, you know, it's all about kind of covering their, uh, their bases on that front. The solution is locate, research, and improve. So locate. So who are the winners in your particular SINs or your, your special item numbers, which is also kind of just the, the, the small, smallest category in the GSA world? Uh, so your competitors, who are they? And who are, who are the winners among those competitors? Uh, then answer the question, why are they winning? Uh, that's where the competitive research comes in. Are their prices low? Are their solutions better? Uh, are they just really well connected? You know, figure that out and uh, then you can move on to the next one and figure out how you can do it better. So you improve according to how others are 
uh, offering and and uh, how the other how the winners are configuring their contracts. Uh, so to do this, you know, here's kind of a little roadmap. Uh, we're going to use something called the SSQ tool. It's a tool that the GSA has, and um, it actually is just a just a, a very antiquated web web app that uh, GSA posts all of the sales data from the GSA program onto. Um, so you can chop it up and configure it however you want. It's a pretty pretty good tool. Uh, hard to use, but the data is nice to nice to to get a, your hands on. Then we're going to take that and roll it on over to the GSA eLibrary page and run it, run some searches for uh, you know those those folks. Um, that's going to be step two. Then uh, we're also going to take a look at GSA Advantage. All right. <clears throat> so, um, and then you know, I guess it's worth mentioning digging into the product offerings of some of the winners, figuring out what is it they're offering. Uh, what are their, you know, what's their shipping like? You know, what's, are they covering freight? Uh, is their delivery, you know, quick? Are they at five days delivered and you're at 30 days? Stuff like that matters to buyers. So, all right, next down here, I'm going to do something that uh, it's probably not the smartest thing to do, but uh, I think it's the best thing to do here. And I'm going to basically play with some live ammo. I'm going to go to the website right here and show you what I do when I, uh, do this research for for clients. So um, here is the website. I'm sure some of you asked, so I'll just cover it. Alan's going to get these this slide deck out to you all uh, after this, so you don't you can you know, take a screenshot if you want, but um, it's going to be there. Here it is. Here's what it looks like. Um, so this takes you to the main page, and then this <laughs> you wouldn't know it, but you click on this little that's actually a button that opens up the little web app. All right, so that's what it looks like. We're going to kind of configure everything uh, just like this. So on this little panel here corresponds to, uh, looks a lot like that right there. I'm actually going to click on Report Builder. The control panel is nice and all, but the Report Builder gives you uh, an option to export, which is kind of nice because this is not the best you know, way to chop up data. Once we export it to a spreadsheet, uh, we can get it, you know, we could use spreadsheets uh, actions and their functions to, to get a lot more powerful. So uh, first thing, let's do the date range, October 19 to September 20. In fact, let's do something real fast. Up here, you do that. If you click outside of the field, it'll spin for a second and then you can, you can make the change over to on this one. So I'm gonna go to 9.30. And this is the federal fiscal year, if you're not familiar with that, October 1st to September 30th of the next year. That is the, so we're covering two fiscal years here. Uh, we're covering 20 and 21. Here's to the numbers for 20. And these are overall numbers for GSA. Oop, don't do that. All right, so we could see in fiscal year 20, they hit 36.7 billion. Fiscal year 21, 39 billion. These are total sales across the entire GSA program. Let's go on back over here. So this is how I configured this just for this test purpose. So level one and level two, these are kind of how you can make the report customized to what you want to see. Contractor duns and what was that second one? Business size. So we're going to take a look at business size. This is optional, of course, but uh, I like to get that data in there and it's just gonna kind of show up as one of these columns. So we could see here are the companies, here are, here's their business size, other than small means large. Uh, and then these are their sales year by year, fiscal year by fiscal year. So another thing we're gonna actually do is we're gonna just, as a you know test case, we're gonna use SIN 33411. If we go to eLibrary and type in 33411, this is gonna be the purchase of new electronic equipment under the IT category. So it's basically high IT hardware. If you're in IT hardware and that's what you do, great, you're gonna love this. If you're not, then you're gonna learn a lot and you can come back and do this in your specific category. Uh, of course, the GSA has a lot of categories, so knowing what SIN you are is very important. Uh, if you don't have a GSA contract, knowing what SIN or SINs you're gonna get into, uh, it will help you kind of, you could, you could do the same thing here, just, uh, you know, you're, you're not in the SIN yet, you're just looking into uh, what others are doing within that SIN. So we're gonna go here down to this cross-contract identifiers, 
right here. And we're going to select this in as you know, unselect all. Takes a minute. There we go. Now we're going to do 33411. I believe that was it. Yep. So we're going to check that box and hit apply. Now this is a, this is an important process. It defaults to all sin, so you have to unselect it. And then this doesn't you know look like it much, but it's actually a search bar. So you, when you enter into it, it will produce some options. These are all different variations that have very little sales. So the main one is the only one I'm going to select, and I'm going to hit apply, and that will actually apply. So you can see spinning circle, spinning circle. All right. So here is the list. As I'm scroll, I could grab this knot and pull it down, you could see these are all of the different contractors within that IT hardware category. Um, so you can see all of the sales, you can see the company name, who's a small business, who's not, all that stuff, good information. Then you just go to this download button and data. So here's a little quirky thing about this uh, particular web app, or this site, data is grayed out just by default. It's the, the one thing you want and they, they don't wanna give it to you. Here's, here's what you do though. You just click inside here somewhere and then you click outside and then let's see if that worked. Oh, it didn't work. All right, try that again. Now data is available. Now it might just be for that one record. Let's see if it is. Uh, looks like it is. So I'm just gonna close close this yeah you have to kind of play around with it you have to select it and you have to go outside of it you might have to do it a couple times there we go now it should have all the records yeah there we go and then you just download all the rows as a text file and it's going to produce it as a csv uh, first thing i like to do is convert it from a csv to an xlsx csvs don't save uh, functions they don't save formatting so a lot of the work you might do would be lost if if it remains as a CSV. So always remember to change that. I'm just going to close this. Uh, th we've kind of come come to the end of this. I'm going to skip a few steps. Don't like to do that, of course, but we only have so much time here today, and I want to get some questions answered also. So this is kind of what it looks like. So I cleaned it up a little bit, but we've got the vendor, we've got the duns, business size, fiscal year 2020, uh, and their sales for that year, and I sorted it from top to bottom from high to low so you could see all that let's do this some auto sum some and let's make sure this gets pulled all the way up to the top and hit enter so we had about 471.7 million go through that category in 2020 two years ago so yeah obviously it'd be nice to have 2021 data uh, but here we go. So I sorted that. Then what I did was I removed all the other than smalls. You know, these are really big companies. You, it's good to know what they're doing and, and all that stuff. But let's take a look at what small businesses are doing that are that are really succeeding. You know, if you're a small business, it, it, you, you kind of want to see what the small businesses are. And then when you get to the higher level, maybe you start going after the larger businesses that are bringing in more. Uh, but, you know, it looks like the small business here, MCP Computer, uh, is even beating out HPI Federal, who is in other than small. So we have a small business actually winning out this category at 47.7 million um, that year. Uh, I went ahead and did a couple things here on the side. And this is, I, I like spreadsheets because you can just kind of build them out and all that stuff. So I went to, I just copied this and you know, let, let's go to the next page actually. So the next one is the research phase. We've gotten, we've got the data, we've got it all in a nice place. We chopped it up in, in a spreadsheet. Now we're gonna go to eLibrary and we're gonna actually run a search for MCP computer product, products. Let's try NCS also, NCS technologies. Oops, that is the wrong one. I'm gonna have to probably do a little split screen here now. All right, so we're gonna go to GSA library and I'm just gonna, I copied this and I'm gonna paste it in there. They should show up. All right, so they have several contracts. I'm sure everything at GSA is being consolidated. So they'll be down to one contract soon. I'm just gonna click on the top one. All right, so we are in SIN 33411. This contract doesn't apply. This one and this one both has that. Um, we'll go to this right here so we can see they have all of these sins. So 
that's important to know because if you're selling IT hardware, uh, these other sins, you know, some a, a company that's doing really well in this particular category, just you know, this, these sales aren't across all these categories. These are just their sales within this one category. Um, and you can also see up here, they're now in other than small business. So they've they've gone and sold themselves out of out of the small business category. Uh, not a bad not a bad thing to do. They're from San Marcos. That's where I'm from. <laughs> Long time ago. I live in Alabama nowadays, but yeah, that's uh that's kind of neat. Um, so we 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 have their e-library page open now, and let's kind of dissect this page for a second. Uh, contract number. Here's the company information. Con point of contact email. Duns. Primary NAICS code. Over here we can see their socioeconomic. So this you used to say small business back in 2020, uh, but they they moved on since then. So now they're other. Um, this person here is their GSA point of contact, the person they deal with that administers their contract. When we move down here now, we can see, and I'm just going to click on this this contract number, and it's just going to move that up to the top there. So you can see that other one drop down and and everything. So this gives their contract number. This I'm going to actually click on and open up in a new window over here. Come back to that in a minute. Uh, contract end date for the next option. Ultimate contract end date because the GSA contract lasts 20 years, but it is chopped up in five-year option renewals. So this is when the next option is. This is when the last option is. Uh, these are the SINs that they're in. So that 33411, not a surprise to see that one there. That is the one we're digging into right now. Um, but, you know, if this is a competitor of yours, you may want to click on these and see what are these SINs. Maybe they are a good fit for you as well. Um, and then these are the GSA Advantage pages. Let's go ahead and click on this one for 33411. This is going to show us all the products that they offer. This company offers under this SIN. So we'll click on that, and I'm going to do that in a separate tab as well. Um, now, this little tiny paper icon uh, opened up this page. This is called the catalog file, the text file, the T's and C's, the price, price list. It, it goes by many names. I just call it the catalog file. And it's a pretty standard form that the GSA has um, just to kind of capture the 26 items. You can see 1A, 1B, 2, 3, all the way down to... 20, well, 24 now, so they updated this recently. The newest version has 24. Uh, a lot of the ones out there still have 26. So you can see, we can see their, their SINs. Uh, we can see their minimum order, maximum order, which is just GSA standard, point of production, quantity discounts. They do not offer any quantity discounts. They do not offer any prompt pay. Time of delivery, so you could kind of see the, the standard time of delivery for uh, each SIN. 30 days for 33411 for hard hardware. No expedited, all that. So we could see their FOB point. You know, these are, you, you could dig in here and you can kind of see some of the important details. So um, they do offer some IT services. So that's what this all is. This doesn't relate to IT hardware though. So we'll skip that over. All right, let's take a look at their GSA Advantage page that came up. Expand this a little bit. It looks kind of silly. All right, so we can, see they have about 13,000 products listed. So that tells me that's, a, that's kind of a lot. They have uh, a, lot, a lot of products and they're selling off of it. So you, you may want to actually uh, you know, consider going, if you're only offering a few hundred products, maybe you should try to get up into the thousands. Um, and of course, be selective. Um, the next question is, well, what brands are they offering that, uh, that's making them do so well? And uh, we can actually do that. Let me take a step. I always get, I always jump ahead so far that I that I go a little bit too far on this. So now we're on the GSA Advantage here. That's where we were. If you go to Manufacturer Directory, you can actually see all of the brands that they are offering. The manufacturers, most most on here, you know, you'll you'll know pretty fast if they are a manufacturer themselves. But many of them are dealers, and I, I, I'm pretty sure they're a dealer. So uh, we're going to click on Manufacturer Directory right here. Um, and among these 13,171 products, uh, these are the, this is the small group of manufacturers that they sell. So they do 16 desktop, notebook, Dell, notebook, notebook, Targus, Dell, Lenovo, Lexmark, notebook. So looks like they're a big Dell distributor. You know, I see Dell everywhere across here. 
Um, willing to bet that their Dell items, look at this, Dell, 6,000 um, HP, 6,600. So, um, so yeah, between Dell and HP, they have a lot of products on there. So they sell desktops. That's, that's certainly IT hardware. Um, you can actually click on one of these and see, you know, it'll actually change GSA e advantage to only show those items. What are all those, those Dell items? Uh, if you sell Dell, um, you can go right here and see, you know, cross compare some of your part, some of your uh, SKUs to theirs and see if they're uh, showing up, you know, it, it, at a lower price, which I bet you they are. Uh, most of the time companies that are this high up, they actually uh, have a really good understanding of what the, the going rate is and they manage their margins and their, and their level of competitiveness really nicely. That's kind of the dance that needs to happen in order to succeed in this way. Uh, in fact, let's just click on the first one. You can click on that part number and kind of see what's going on here. So they're the only one that offers this item. That's interesting. It's a, it's a Dell part or, um, yeah, it's a Dell item and they're the only one offering it. That's, that's interesting. Maybe they have an approach to offering Dell items um, that they've kind of produced themselves. So Got a little spinny thing here. Don't know what that's about. Let's come back. Okay, there we go. So let's just go down to the page and randomly click another one and see, is this one contested? No. So they're, they're the only one offering that one as well. So we'll go back. Let's go back again, manufacturer directory, and let's just do the same thing with the HP. They seem to have a lot of uh, items that are uncontested. Um, not here. Right here, they are not the cheapest, not the most expensive. There's actually not a lot of range here for 24.5, 25.5. So within a thousand dollar range, they're right in the middle. Uh, they have this D means destination. That means they pay, they cover the, the price of shipping, but everybody does that. 30 days. Um, it looks like they had a lot of these uh, set asides. They were small business, uh, disadvantaged, women owned, women owned, uh, econ economically disadvantaged, women owned. Um, so you can see here that that seems to matter in uh, the IT hardware space uh, because they're, you know, not the most competitive, but people were gravitating towards purchasing from them anyways. Um, and you know, this is just one record of thousands and thousands of records. They might be the most competitive in, you know, uh, on most of them, but um, in this case, not so. Um, so that, you know, that's just a, a little dive. You could take yourself down as far down the rabbit hole as you want to go. Um, but it, you know, now you know how to get down the rabbit hole and uh, now you know kind of, you know, what to do. And I guess the question now is, uh, you know, pick a rabbit hole and go down it and uh, then come back a little bit, pick another rabbit hole, go down that. Um, take some good notes off to the side as well. You know, I have, uh, for them, I took, I actually grabbed all of their brands and copied them, pasted them in here. I grabbed their sins and put a link to their e-library page. Um, and ASAP is actually another tool. If you are on GSA and you don't know what ASAP is, I'm about to, uh, hopefully blow your mind. Um, I don't have a, a way to go into it, but, uh, you know, this is basically what the page looks like right here. Pretty basic. Uh, you'll see here uh, federal agencies, multiple award schedule contractors. This is you if you have a GSA contract and you can click on that. What ASAP does is it is a tool where advantage, it's, a, it's the advantage spend analysis program. So a lot of really good to know advantage data that, you know, is living on here, you know, but you can't really access it unless you spend <laughs> months and months chopping up the data, um, it's gonna come up on here. So for example, one thing on here that's really, really good is you can look up MCP computer products and what were their top 10 to 25, I think it's the top 10 selling items on GSA Advantage. So if you do that for these top five small business IT hardware companies and just pull all those items into, you know, I would just drop them into this second uh, workbook here on the same sheet and say, okay, what are the top selling items for all of them? You know, it, then it stands to reason that if you add those items to your contract at a slightly lower price, you're probably going to have a pretty good year. You know, that's, 
that's just basic logic right there. Um, there's some other areas in here that are helpful as well, um, but that one right there is, is worth its weight in gold. Just knowing that ASAP.gsa.gov will get you some answers on what these folks are selling that are being purchased. Uh, you know, and that's, GSA gives you that data. You just gotta go get it. All right, next thing is improving. And you know, I'll, I'll throw this out there too. Um, my, I offer this to my clients. I've, I've built out a, a or I didn't do it myself, but I had a GSA Advantage scraping tool uh, built for me, uh, you know, and I can use it. So, uh, you know, my, for my clients, if they ever want an analysis, I just have that tool run and they give me the, they give me the uh, parameters or the variables and I, and I run that and get them the raw data. It's a, and I, you know, I do clean it up a little bit for them. Um, but yeah, that's something that I do for, for clients. Uh, if you're interested in that, I'm happy to, to do, to see what I could do. Um, it's definitely outside of the GSA, uh, GSA tools. It's, a, it's another tool just because advantage is advantage. It just has everything on there. It's like going to Amazon, you know, but you, you don't really have any vision into uh, price competitiveness item by item. And if you have thousands of items, the last thing you want to do is click on here uh, click on here, see, you know, who's, who's the number one, what's their price? Who's the number two, what's their price? And go down the line. And then also, you know, what's their FOB? What's their delivery? You know, so it, it gathers all these variables in one place and, and then moves right on to the next part. Same thing, same thing, same thing forever until you reach the end of the line. So a lot of information pulled together into a spreadsheet that way. Um, so, I think we just about exhausted that. Hopefully your heads aren't spinning too much. Uh, we have about 20 minutes left and I will have some time to get to some questions. The final step is improving. I think we covered that a lot. So really, you know, generally you're looking at pricing, you know, what, what are the, is, what are the winners charging? What, what's their price look like? Uh, you, if you have a good understanding of certain brands, certain manufacturers and what their MSRP is, you can try to, reverse engineer what their what the the winner's uh, targeted pro, uh, profit margin is and just know that that's that's a good thing to know so there's a lot of pricing details and, and you know data that you can pull out of doing this analysis uh, you can also have a lot of insight into what brands you might want to supply on GSA that you currently aren't um, especially with the ASAP maybe you run uh, an analysis of you run an a, through run ASAP through these five top five small businesses in this category. And you find that, you know, there's two or three brands that are pretty much on all of them and they're getting purchased quite a bit. Maybe you need to add those brands. And then also looking through their terms and conditions, their catalog file, this one, and just see if there, are there any details in their 24 items that pop out as, oh, maybe uh, you should offer a similar term, make some changes to your contract accordingly because sometimes these matter to buyers uh delivery is a big one you know if they sometimes they need things in 10 days and everybody on there is 30 days but then there's one company that says five days they can get it get it out so they're going to go with the five day company no matter what the price is there because they need it all right now conclusion um a little bit about uh me you know if you want to get in touch with me there's my email i'm happy to answer any questions and help out however i can so Feel free to do that. Uh, if you want to know more about the GSA program, my site has a ton of information. So you can go to my blog, a uh, lot of articles on there covering just about everything from every angle relating to the GSA. I think we hit five to seven posts a month. So we're very active. Um, you can also right on the homepage, hit that uh, orange button, big orange button. To download some free resources uh, that'll get you some ebooks um, I think I also throw my proposal at you so you can learn a little bit about our prices and all that stuff this is an SBA sponsored webinar I'm not here to advertise myself but um, if you do want more information I do want to make myself available to you and get some resources in your hands um, my phone number is there as well so uh, that's it uh, all that same information is right here uh, email website phone number uh, now it's question time. So, uh, Alan, feel free to come back on and kind of, Alan's going to take your questions and kind of be the, the presenter. He's going to be the Alex Trebek and ask, ask those questions. 
Um, <laughs> I, I don't know about I don't know about uh, Alex Trebek, but um, well, you've done actually such a great job at this, uh, Josh, and uh, a lot of t- I learn something new every time when I'm watching uh, you uh, surf around these tools and and everything as well. So no, actually, you no questions have come through. So that's wow. uh, that's a sign that you have uh, educated the masses well. So. Um, any final comments? Um, the only thing I'd say is, you know, if, if, if you are free next week at the same time, I'll be going over the five things to learn before getting a GSA schedule. Uh, so if you don't have a GSA contract and you want to know, are you eligible? Is the return on investment uh, potentially there for you? Um, we're going to cover a lot of the, just the, uh, it's a pretty quick run through to get you from, you know, soup to nuts on on figuring out if it's a good move for you. Um, so just inviting everybody to that. And I know Alan will follow up with the, uh, with the, the details there. Um, other than that, thanks for, thanks for jumping on here today. I hope you you found some value. Thanks, Josh. Thanks everybody for coming out again. If you have not already done so, please make sure and register uh, at sba7j.fedbitspeed.com uh, there. So I will take this, send it through the link. That way you can have access to uh, the recordings and all the trainings, uh, we will be sending out uh, the slides uh, to you along with the recording once it's processed uh, there. So uh, get on, register. Uh, we do five to ten briefings a week. Uh, we've got the source of salt briefing coming up here at the top of the hour. So if you've got time to um, stick around for that, uh, log off of this, log on to that. We're going to review all the source of salts that have come out in the last week amongst the different NAICS codes and show you the templates uh, that are available uh, to respond uh, there. So we're here to help. Uh, If you have any questions moving forward, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out, uh, whether it's about GSA or doing anything with the federal government as far as doing business with the federal government. We know it's not easy. That's why we're here to help and bring in resources to you like Josh to to help uh, navigate this thing called doing business with the federal government. So. I'm Alan Scheidt. Thanks a lot for coming out today. We will see you soon. Thanks a lot.